So whilst the information that I'm going to give in this video might be nothing new to you, the point of this video is to help people understand the process that goes into disseminating academic information about training. And in this case, I'm going to look at Dr. Brad Schoenfeld uh, and, and one of his recent pieces of work from 2017. He is known as the hypertrophy guy, the muscle size guy. He has quite a substantial amount of academic research under his belt. And so when it comes to how many reps and sets to build muscle, essentially you can build muscle with multiple rep ranges in your macro cycle, heavy weight, volume, even uh, what would be considered muscular endurance exercises have application to muscle growth due to the increase in, in capillaries. But Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and colleagues conclude that indeed it is higher volume which will lead to increases in muscle hypertrophy and they state in their summary that this would be a minimum of 10 sets per week per body part. This particular paper that I'm discussing with you is where they looked at the literature already in the field and they took 15 academic studies and they looked at the dose response relationship between uh, weekly sets and hypertrophy. Now the first thing that I would say that makes this extremely impressive, in my opinion, is how they came to the 15 uh, articles that they looked at. They didn't just pick 15 articles, it was a very in-depth, thorough process in terms of finding suitable research studies for them to then look at. They actually started with 1,474 records in their database. That was then uh, narrowed down to full text, 38 full text articles, where eventually, using a range of different parameters and criteria, they came upon the final 15 studies that they used for their literature or their academic uh, review. And so so this is very important because it increases the quality of the information that ultimately you are being given which you apply to your workouts. And they concluded that there is an incremental dose response relationship between volume and muscle hypertrophy. In other words, uh, an increase in volume leads to uh, an increase in hypertrophy. And to be clear, within the research they also state within their discussion that low volume training can build muscle. But of course this is predicated on how much time you have available for your training. However, it is emphasized, and I quote within this research, that it is high volume which has significantly greater increases in muscle. One of the reasons given for this is perhaps the greater time under tension at certain loads. And within this study, Brad Schoenfeld quotes one of his uh, previous studies from 2013, and this is very interesting. And he says that research indicates that exercise-induced metabolic stress augments muscle protein accretion when a minimum threshold for mechanical tension is achieved. Now, of course, with volume, the more volume you are using, the more you are building up this metabolic stress, as I have discussed in previous videos. And within this study, it's also mentioned that there is there is most certainly an upper threshold to volume, at which point it will become less effective, you may plateau or indeed regress in your training. But within this, this research, it is stated that we do not have sufficient research to accurately give a number as to uh, what amount of volume is too high and therefore ineffective. And when you look at the summary of this research, there's some very interesting points. And the key one for me is this idea of individualization of training programs. It's hard to give that cookie cutter number of how much volume is optimal. That word optimal, which can be a dangerous word to use in fitness for, for each person. It will depend on person to person and this is heavily influenced by genetics as stated within this, this research article. And of course, within any uh, good piece of academic research, you're gonna look at limitations in your research. Schoenfeld and colleagues identified the fact that within their analysis of the current literature, they found that, of course, they were looking at only hypertrophy-related outcomes, and they weren't looking at any other underlying mechanisms behind muscle growth. So this is a limitation in terms of the conclusion of this dose-response relationship between volume and muscle building. So I've linked the article below this video so you can read it for yourself. And in this case, Schoenfeld and colleagues believe that there is a dose-response relationship with volume and muscle build, 
building and that appreciable muscle is built through this volume. Now this is nothing new to you. Many of you have uh, do uh, some form of volume training to build muscle, but what I wanted to get across in this video is how much goes in to creating this information for you. Perhaps just by talking about this in this very short video, it might make, make you think more about the information that you listen to and that you believe in. And perhaps in YouTube fitness, there's, there's a lot of information which is not applicable to you. So I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. See you soon.